Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at vaccines. We are going to be looking at the immune response that vaccines create. And also, we're going to look at what is the actual difference between vaccination and immunization, because they're not the same thing, but they are related to one another. We're also going to take a look at what triggers the different kind of immune responses and the different kinds of vaccines that are available today. And I'm going to walk you through how um, to explain them. Now, this is a new section to the curriculum. So if you're watching this and you think, oh, we haven't got to that part yet, it's because it's just been most recently added. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. So let's get into the video. Now, if you don't know too much about viruses, bacteria, anything else like that, you need to go back and watch my introduction to microorganisms video. I've just linked it above now. You need to be quite familiar with the nature in which viruses in particular replicate. Now, in front of you, what we have here is a collection of pathogens, and these are all uh, viral pathogens. We have measles over here, we have the common flu, and we have chicken pox. And then we have this new pathogen, which we're going to get to now. Now, what's most important about pathogens and immunity is your body is able to recognize foreign invaders because of things called antigens. And the antigens in these pictures are these various uh, like shapes or spiky proteins that sit on the outside of a pathogen and they identify them as to what they are. Now, your body uses these antigens to determine whether or not the cell belongs inside of you or if it is a foreign invader. Now, what happens is when you are injected with vaccines, for example, like with measles, we create a memory of the antigen and we create a memory of the shape of that antigen and we create an antibody for it. Now, if you're not so sure about immunity, again, you should go and link to the video above where I explain the various kinds of antibodies, lymphocytes and B and Ts. So go and have a look at that video first and then come back here. But antibodies essentially are these proteins that label foreign invaders and destroy them. And you will notice that the antigen is the same shape that we find at the end of the antibody. Likewise, with the flu, it's the same shape at the end. And the chicken pox, same thing. And this allows us to remember or have what we call immunological memory, which basically means we are able to remember the infection so that if we get attacked again, we'll be able to fight off the infection faster and more successfully. Now, what happens if a new pathogen enters into your body? We do not have any antibodies that fit these particular antigens, which means that your body is not able to fight this infection off very quickly. It is a bit of a slow process. Now, when you have a vaccine, you are able to expose the body to a new pathogen safely in such a way that it allows your body to create antibodies as quickly as possible, whilst making sure that you don't actually succumb to the disease, which means that you don't get very ill or potentially die from it. Now, what I'd like to look at is the immune response to vaccines. So how do your body actually react to vaccines? So there are two kinds of vaccines I want to cover now. One of them is a, a little more older kind of vaccine, but it's very, very, very useful and is still used today. And then the other one is a little bit more modern. We might have seen this kind of vaccination happening if you've had a um, COVID vaccine very recently. But the first one I'm going to look at is when you are exposed to dead or weakened pathogens. So what happens is you end up getting an injection that is filled with a weak or dead bacteria or virus. And what happens is it triggers an immune response, which means your white blood cells are triggered to produce antibodies to fight the disease. Now, what are they trying to fight? Remember, they are trying to fight the antigens on the outside. So remember, what we've done is if this is the bacterial cell, it will have some kind of antigen on the outside identifying it as foreign. But what we have also done is we've damaged it, right? So we've put a little hole in it over here. So that means it can't actually successfully replicate inside of us. So we don't need to worry about it taking over. 
Now, this gives your body enough time to respond. It makes antibodies of those antigens. Remember, we want to make little antibodies that match these antigens on the outside. And then we create what we call immunological memory. And we store these antibodies inside of memory cells. And memory cells are really important for vaccinations to work because the point of a vaccine is so that if you are ever exposed to that pathogen ever again, you have the um, immunological memory to fight it off quickly, efficiently, without succumbing to the disease. And succumbing to a disease means you get serious um, symptoms and potentially you die from that disease. Now what happens if you are actually exposed to the disease at a later stage, you already have the antibodies. And so the response is very fast, very quick, and you won't even feel anything. You might have a runny nose, maybe a bit of a fever, but no serious symptoms like, for example, encephalitis, which would be like swelling of the brain, which are some of the more serious side effects of having viral infections. Now, I want to bring your attention to what is a more common uh, vaccination today as well which are mRNA vaccines. Now, you might have had an mRNA vaccine if you have had a COVID vaccine recently. One of them that is a mRNA vaccine is a Pfizer vaccine. If you've had the Johnson & Johnson's vaccine, then you have had the uh, weakened and dead version of that vaccine. So how do mRNA vaccines work? Well, what we do is we take a teeny tiny little piece of mRNA, which is like a recipe, and that recipe is for the antigen. So that little recipe is going to tell us to make these little antigens, right? So we know what they look like. Okay, they're also called spike proteins. You might have heard that word before. The mRNA then enters into your cells. And don't worry, they can't harm your cells in any way. Remember, just a little, little piece is entered. And your, start, your cells start to produce spike proteins, all those little antigens. Remember that? Now what happens is that these little antigens are recognized by your immune system. Your immune system yet again produces antibodies. And then if that particular virus does get into you, you now already have the antibodies present in your bloodstream that will attach to the spike proteins of this particular virus, which in this picture is COVID or SARS-CoV-2. And now you have an immunological memory of it. It's two different ways that produce the exact same outcome. The only major difference is that in the first option, we were exposing you to the whole uh, bacteria or the virus, right? Just a little hole in it or slightly weakened. In the second option, we are just exposing you to the recipe to make the antigens on the outside. Now, I want you to know that this is all active immunity, which means that you are being exposed to the pathogens, right? So this is active immunity. But what is the difference between vaccination and immunization? So vaccination, everybody, is the physical vaccining you. In other words, the needle going into you, right? That is vaccination. Once the vaccine is inside of your bloodstream and it is interacting with your immunity or your immune cells, you are now being immunized, okay? So in other words, vaccination is the process and immunization is the product at the very end. It now means you've been immunized against something and potentially you are immune to it. Now, as always, I like to finish off my videos with a little bit of a terminology recap. There wasn't too much terminology in this particular section, but I do want to highlight the importance of knowing what an antigen was. Remember, that is the protein on the outside, which identifies it as a foreign invader or it identifies a cell as being belonging to you okay so these are on all cells it just needs to know is this cell ours or is this a foreign invader likewise we also need to know what an antibody is and an antibody is a protein that is produced by white blood cells and those white blood cells specifically make these to clump viruses and bacteria together to destroy them which one of those white blood cells uh, produce that is B lymphocytes. And if you don't know what a B lymphocyte is, you must go back and do my immunity introduction. We also looked at the word pathogen, which is any disease-causing microorganism. 
we looked at the obviously the word vaccine or to vaccinate which is the physical actual like needle going into you and then lastly i spoke about active immunity which is when you are exposed to the pathogen and you actively respond to it passive immunity on the other hand if you can't remember is when you are getting your antibodies from somebody else generally passive immunity is gained through like breastfeeding and it's short term and it's, and it's temporary. It can also be given to you um, if you get what we call a um, antibody serum, um, which is where somebody else donates their antibodies to you. So again, you are not exposed to it. Somebody else was. In active immunity, you are exposed to the pathogen and your body responds to it. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.